How a fertilized egg turns into the 200 different types of cells that make up all of our tissues and organs is a complete mystery. But here's what we do know. All the tissues and organs have the same genes and balanced set of 46 chromosomes. The cells never rest and they are constantly responding to their surroundings. This is readily apparent during the development of the embryo and fetus in the womb. The 46 chromosomes are located in specific regions of the nucleus. When a cell changes into another type of cell, it rearranges the chromosomes in the nucleus to orchestrate the appropriate changes in the production of proteins in the new cell. Cancer is a, a grotesque parody of the normal development of tissues. Radiation and chemical carcinogens interfere with cell division and cause unbalanced chromosomes. The very first cells with a few unbalanced chromosomes are a long way from being cancer. While the progression of cells with unbalanced chromosomes is automatic, it is very inefficient and usually fails. An imbalance of chromosomes always damages the cell, but a gain in chromosomes is better tolerated than a loss. That is why cancer cells typically have 60 to 90 chromosomes instead of the normal 46 chromosomes. It takes decades of divisions for these cells to reach the right combination of chromosomes to become solid cancers. The unbalanced chromosomes cause host cell disruption of normal cellular activities. An increase in the number of chromosomes produces a proportional increase in the amount of protein of a cell. In order to make the extra protein, cancer cells convert glucose into energy up to 200 times faster than the normal cells. This boost in energy production in cancer is called the Warburg effect and until recently was a big mystery. Unfortunately, the crowding due to the extra protein causes cancer cells to secrete dangerous digestive enzymes and other proteins that allow the cells to invade surrounding tissues and to spread to other parts of the body. Everything about cancer is very inefficient, from initiation by carcinogen, progression to malignancy, and metastasis. Even though malignant tumors shed cancer cells like dandruff, only one in 60 million cancer cells that detach from a primary tumor ever establishes a tumor somewhere else in the body. I mentioned Down syndrome in part two. Down syndrome is caused by three copies of chromosome 21 in every cell. All the genes are normal, but the extra chromosome 21 unpredictably alters the activity of individual cells throughout the body, causing more than 80 physical and mental disorders, including the characteristic facial features, abnormal growth, and increased risk of cancer. Even the imbalance caused by the smallest chromosome increases the risk of people with Down syndrome for cancers of small intestine, colon, ovary, penis, stomach, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, testes, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. The risk of the various forms of leukemia are especially high. Depending on the source, acute myelogenous leukemia, AML, is 175 to 500 times more likely in people with Down syndrome. However, there is a significant difference between the risk of cancer in people with Down syndrome compared to the general population. Due to their need for special care, people with Down syndrome live in relatively protected environments compared to normal adults. For example, smoking is much less prevalent in people with Down syndrome. Consequently, cancer of the lung, throat, breast, kidney, head, and neck are much reduced compared to normal adults. The cancers of the blood, the leukemias, lymphomas, and myelomas, are usually considered separately from solid cancers because they are highly mobile and circulate throughout all regions of the body. Since samples are easy to obtain, blood cancers can be detected at much earlier stages of their development than solid cancers. Consequently, blood cancers have fewer abnormal chromosomes when first diagnosed, with individuals showing few, if any, serious symptoms. But as the numbers of chromosomes approach that of the solid cancers, the blood cancers become more deadly. In part four, we'll see why drug resistance is inevitable. 